Hey guys, it's Zaria. Well, hello, why is it my name so weird? So today's video is another Encanto kind of inspired video. Um, I made a set of ears for my bestie Erica when we did our best friend box swap and it was an entire Encanto themed box swap. If you missed that video I'll be sure to link mine and Erica's down below so that you can see everything we sent to each other because it was glorious. Speaking of, Erica sent me these earrings in that box along with this super cute shirt. I had to show it off. Moving right along, this tutorial is gonna be showing you guys how I made this set of ears. These were very much inspired by um, the song Dos Oruquitas. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm doing my best. That song makes me cry pretty much every single time I hear it. It is so beautiful, it is so heartfelt, you can just feel Oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't. Anyway, that song inspired these ears. I know how much Erica loves butterflies and blush tones and things like that, so I kind of took what Erica loves and combined it with how much this song means to both of us and created this set of ears. These are light up ears and I haven't made a set of light up ears on my channel in a little while so I was really excited to make these. Um, if you guys want to see the other types of light up ears that I've made I will have my entire DIY Mickey ear playlist linked down below. There's over 60 tutorials on there. I'm sure there's something that you're looking for. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in and let's jump into this tutorial. So starting off, these are wire ears, and I'll be using this gold floral wire from Dollar Tree along with this bronze floral wire. It's actually jewelry wire from Walmart. And I'm going to be twisting these together. I just really loved the look of the gold and the bronze swirling together, that it complemented the color scheme I was going for. And I also think that this helps make the ears a little bit sturdier because instead of being made of one flexible wire, it's now two wires kind of braided together. But you're just gonna go around and twist those and then we will form them into the ear shape. In order to form them into the ear shape, we're going to be using one of the templates linked down below. I'm using the foam and batting template because I didn't want these ears to be overpoweringly large. You could also go up to the medium size, which is the sewing template, but I would suggest definitely sticking with the smaller two templates. The largest template is just a little bit too big unless you like oversized Mickey ears. Um, but you're going to take your wire and trim it down until you've got just enough to create this shape. Um, I have made wire ears several different ways. This is what I would probably say is my favorite method is where the ears themselves are not necessarily connected. Having needle nose pliers on hand is definitely a useful tool. Sometimes you can find these at Dollar Tree, but they're not that expensive at Walmart either. And they're just kind of save your fingers from twisting this wire around in order to close up the bottom. Obviously you're gonna repeat this step to create two ears for yourself and then we're gonna move over to attaching them to our headband. Now I have already attached one side, but I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did that. Um, you are just going to take the ear and using my ear spacing template down below, or if you have a set of Mickey ears on hand, you can space them according to that. Um, but I'm holding down the ear and then using a silver Sharpie on a black headband to mark exactly where that ear is going to go. And that's just gonna help this ear not, you know, look lopsided or <laughs> too off center. Um, and then I'm gonna do a thin line of hot glue and press my ear down onto my headband. And then using these Dollar Tree clips, I'm just gonna hold it in place. Um, this just gives that initial glue some time to set down. Those Dollar Tree clips, you guys, I use them all the time on my channel. You get six for $1.25 and they are so worth it. Now, obviously that little amount of glue is not enough to make these ears secure. So what we're going to do in order to secure them is use black satin ribbon. Again, I got this ribbon from Dollar Tree. You get, I believe nine feet of it. Um, and you're just gonna do a little bit of hot glue and then wrap it around the headband going through the ear. Again, this just provides a good bit of reinforcement for your ears, making sure that they're very well attached to your headband and they are not going anywhere. Once you've gone all the way around, then you're just gonna snip off the excess ribbon, glue down your end, and do the exact same thing on the other side. 
A helpful tip for this is definitely just to work a little bit at a time. Don't do a line of hot glue and then be pulling the ribbon through because more than likely your ribbon is going to catch on the hot glue and make kind of a big hot glue mess. So I just do a little dot and then pull the ribbon through, press it down, and then repeat those steps until I am all the way around. These are the lights that I like to use on my ears because the battery pack is so small and easy to replace the batteries. The lights are also super bright and I honestly have never had to replace the batteries on any of my light up ears yet. <laughs> um, I will link below just some options for you guys and they do come in multi packs which is nice if you're planning on making more than one set of ears. Because I had a very specific vision for these flowers, I went to Walmart so that I could get something that looked a little bit higher quality than Dollar Tree and specifically had um, more realistic looking flowers. No knock against Dollar Tree, I love them clearly, but um, flower wise I did think that these looked a lot higher end and so for this particular set of ears I decided to spend a little extra money just to make sure they're exactly what I wanted. Um, now I went ahead and pulled all of the buds off of the stems and I'm just kind of going to lay them out the way that I'd like to. I'm also counting them to make sure that I have enough to do the front and the back because obviously you don't want the back to look ugly. <laughs> um, now with these, I don't know what to call them because I don't know the names of flowers very well, but these like large circular flowers, um, I'm making sure to space them out, but also matching them up front and back. So if I put one on the front, I went ahead and glued it on the back just to make sure that they are reinforcing each other and look really nice together. Now we're going to move on to the filler flowers, which are a little bit smaller, but they're also equally as beautiful. I love that they came in two different shades of blush tones, but they do have these weird little curvy stem pieces. So I went ahead and snipped those off because it made it easier to attach them. And I'm kind of squishing them between two of the larger flowers. Again, that's kind of why I call these filler flowers because they fill space. Go figure. Something that I personally like to do is to have a larger flower, just one that is kind of like the centerpiece, if you will, and I like to put that on one side of the ear, similar to what I'm doing right here. So I picked out the largest circular flower in the group. Um, you don't have to do this, I just think sometimes it looks nice. I did try to use like a larger, almost like a rose, but it was too big. So just space them out, see how you like it, and continue gluing on all these flowers. Now before doing the center, we are going to attach our light switch pack because obviously you want that to be hidden underneath the flowers. So I'm gonna take my light switch pack and I'm gonna make sure that the screws are facing toward the sky. That way if I ever need to replace the batteries, I can get a little screwdriver in there and pop off the top of it and replace the batteries. Now I haven't had to do this yet because again, I've been making gears for like I've been making ears for years and I've never had to replace the batteries, but should I have to, there is a good chance you'll have to replace the flowers that are covering it, but I am honestly okay with that as long as I can access the battery pack. Now I am firmly pressing that down and just making sure that it got adhered very nicely and now I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. I do sometimes hot glue flowers directly onto the battery pack. I just make sure I'm not gluing right on top of the actual screws. And then um, you can also just glue on the perimeter of it if that makes sense in order to cover it a little bit better. So at this point, I have all of my flowers attached for the most part. I think I might have one little tiny bald spot that I was saving. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start lacing through the lights. And how I'm going to do that is by wrapping that wire all the way around one of the sides. So we're not going around the ear yet. We're weaving the light in and out of the flowers. And this is what's going to allow those flowers to glow in addition to the actual lights that are gonna be on the ears. Now you wanna to weave to one side and then you're going to, you know, 
take your light strand and kind of bundle it back up nice and neat. Um, this I found has been very helpful as opposed to leaving the strand long and having to pull the whole thing through the ear. But now that we've gone through the flowers once, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it around the ear. I do highly suggest counting the amount of bulbs on your strand so that you can make sure that your ears end up symmetrical. Um, I just counted how many bulbs I have left and I believe I ended up deciding to do four or five bulbs on the ears themselves. And then I will weave that rest of that light strand through the flowers. So at this point I have one ear completely done and as you can see I've got four visible light bulbs right there. Um, now I'm going to go across the light switch panel and I do have a bulb on this side but you can't see it so I'm not counting that in my total in order to make it symmetrical if that makes sense. And then I'm just going to continue wrapping around this ear and then I will show you guys how to weave the rest through your flowers. Okay, so the remaining strand of lights is all excess, if that makes sense. Like our ears are lit up, they're even, and now we're just gonna take this light strand and just start weaving it around the flower. So you're literally taking the wire and just wrapping it around the base of your flowers. Um, you don't wanna be able to see the wire because I think it looks a lot more magical when all you can see are the flowers glowing. Um, so make sure that you're just really pushing it between each flower and hiding it. This is honestly so easy, you guys. I don't even know if I need to include the entire thing of me doing it, but I also know that if it's your first time, sometimes that can be a little nerve wracking. So um, I'm just gonna continue weaving this until I am all hidden with my lights. Okay, so the lights are done and now I'm gonna go in and finish gluing down the flowers. I don't really remember, if I'm being honest, why I decided to wait, but I did. So there's that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the last of the flowers and then we will move on to adding the little gold butterflies. So I had these gold butterflies from Daylin's Encanto birthday party and they were like up on the walls and stuff, but I noticed that the inside of the wing has even smaller butterflies as part of the wing design. Um, these are too large to add to these ears in my opinion. I think they would be like very overpowering. So I decided to go the extra mile, use my X-Acto knife and cut out these teeny tiny butterflies. Um, I really just wanted them to have like a metallic quality. I'm sure that there are easier ways to do this or better ways to do this even, but this is what I had and I really wanted to add the butterflies to the ears. Now before we actually start gluing them, I'm just gonna show you guys what these look like. I think that it really does add like the perfect touch. I also think these are beautiful as bridal ears. Like if you're going to Disney World to celebrate getting married or something like that, these are absolutely perfect for that. I am just using hot glue to add these. I'm just making sure not to use a whole lot because I obviously don't want it to ooze out. And as far as positioning, I would definitely play around with them just to make sure that they look how you want them to look. Some of them I have standing up 
inside the flowers so it looks like they're flying out of the flowers and then some of them I actually bent the wings a little bit to make it look like they were landed on the flower if that makes sense. Okay, so fun fact, I actually do have an alternative for you guys that I forgot about until I saw the clip. Um, but Dollar Tree has these little laser cut wooden butterflies. They are so pretty. I'm saving mine for another project, but I totally think that these could work on this ears. These, this set of ears, you could paint them gold or you could just leave them as is. They're super beautiful, lightweight. They'd be easy to attach. Um, they are definitely larger, but also not overpowering. And that is the last step in these ears. This is what they look like not lit up, and this is what they look like lit up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please check out my other videos if you enjoyed this one. I seriously can't say thank you enough for the support you guys provide me and my channel just by watching and liking and commenting and subscribing. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.